Greetings, warm, radiant, proud, Leo. My name is Eliane Nicole. I'm an astrologer and tarot card reader. And now I'm going to do the March 2021 astrology and tarot forecast for the sign of Leo. And I'm going to talk um, mostly about the tarot cards, but also some broad strokes of the planetary transits. I encourage you to follow me on Instagram at astrology.tarot.elianenicole, where um, I will talk in more specifics about the planetary transits as they come. But in the meantime and in between time, it's great if you watch the videos here for your sun and your rising, um, or if you have a night chart, your moon and your rising. And um, <clears throat> if you don't know your sun, moon, and rising, you definitely should contact me to have your chart done. Everyone should have that done at least, at least once in life. So as we enter the month of March, Leo, you have the Ten of Pentacles. This is family, abundance, prosperity, residence, wealth, the full picture. And you were covered by the Ten of Cups reversed, which could be uh, a family upset of some kind. And so there's two tens right at the beginning of the month for you. Um, within the first, uh, you know, six, first week of the month, really, um, family is a big focus. Um, and you were crossed by the Four of Swords in March. So the crossed card, you know, it's not upright, it's not reversed, it's crossed. It's the only one in the layout that's crossed. And the Kabbalists relate this to our tikkun or karmic correction. So your karmic correction for uh, the month of March has to do with meditation, quiet reflection, time alone, retreating. Um, so it looks like that would be really good for you to get some time to do that in that month. And the basis, the tower reverse. So it looks like there's a big paradigm shift happening in your life. Um, and what's leaving? The two of cups. So. This has to do with um, a love situation, a relationship situation, um, possibly a romantic situation. The Two of Cups can also be a, co a creative collaboration or any kind of intimate relationship if it's not a romantic relationship for you. But it looks like that is passing or it can also just be some form or iteration of a romantic relationship that's passing. And what could come into being around mid-month, it looks like uh, very good for you financially. Um, the money is right. There's a lot of growth and fertility. Um, and what will come into being also around mid-month, well, this is around the 16th to the 18th, um, there could be a conflict or a struggle involving uh, three people or more. Um, that's around the time Mercury enters Pisces. And I guess, um, you know, a lot is happening in your eighth house. Um, so the 13th through the 15th, this, um, when I told you here, there's abundance and fertility and growth and good money. This is also as the new moon of Pisces is emerging in your eighth house. The eighth house is the house of other people's money. Sometimes it can be your spouse's money or it can be your parents' money. Um, the eighth house can also have to do with loans, inheritances, wills, settlements, anything like that. So that looks really good for you around the new moon of Pisces. Um, when um, during the 16th to the 18th, though, we also see a struggle around that same area, around possibly any of those same themes, eighth house themes, as Mercury enters Pisces. And Mercury in Pisces is in its detriment because sometimes, um, you know, details get lost when Mercury is in Pisces because Pisces is more about the big picture. Um, and so that could possibly be where the conflict or struggle was. Maybe there's fine print, maybe there's 
details. It, it, it could be around communication. Um, Pisces communication is very intuitive, very feeling based, very emotional, um, based on the dream, you know? Um, and so, yeah, that's the 16th through the 18th of uh, March when that comes into its strength, but it could be on the table for the entire month. Fears or insecurities for Leo. Okay, so this is the King of Pentacles. This is around a man and money. It could be around a financial or business offer that a man is making to you. Um, or it could just be around a financial, a big financial move that you need to make in general. Um, you know, pentacles are earth. Normally kings uh, correspond to people like men in your life, husbands, fathers, bosses, landlords, prospective employers, things like that. Um, but sometimes the king can just represent, you know, the establishment in general. Um, and then sometimes it can just um, relate to your own mastery over money where there may be a fear or insecurity. So the King of Pentacles can run the gamut of that in that department for you. And this is also um, appearing in uh, around the time that um, the sun enters Aries March 20th and Venus enters Aries March 21st. So the Sun and Venus are entering your ninth house. This is the house of God, of higher truth, spirituality, religion. It can also have to do with cross-cultural experiences, international travel. Um, this house can also have to do with broadcasting or publishing where applicable. So yeah, others see you as the Seven of Cups. So others see you as exploring your future options and making a decision about which direction you want to take. It looks like you have a lot of options. Um, and it could also be that, um, you know, anyway, I'm just going to keep moving. Um, your positive feelings, the King of Pentacles reverse. So this looks like this may be a delay or postponement in a business proposal or a contract or negotiation of some kind. But even though it's delayed, you have positive feelings about that. Um, this could also manifest as a man, the Knight of Pentacles. Sometimes knights are proposals or sometimes there are people. So in the case, if this is a person, this could be someone who is uh, an impractical or irresponsible man, yet you have positive feelings about him. Um, he's showing up in your positive feelings. And then in the tarot, it's a, you know, where the card shows up is just as important as what the meaning of the card is. Because cards, you know, they, sh they, they become, they shape shift slightly in meaning, although the basic principle stays the same, depending on how their position is. And then the end of the month, and this is around the full moon of Libra, you have the lovers, the lovers reversed. And... So this could be um, a lover's quarrel, it could be a spat, it could be not seeing eye to eye on a decision, um, an important decision that you're making with your lover or spouse. If you were single, it could mean that you were just really, you know, feeling that and really wanting um, to have that at this time. This is around, again, this is around the full moon of Libra and Libra rules marriage, romance, love. Libra also rules justice. Libra also um, rules, um, what else? Um, I'm leaving things out, art, creativity, beauty. Um, and so with all of this at the Libra full moon, it's actually going to be in your third house of communication. Um, it's also the house, the third house is the house that rules the neighborhood. Um, and it can have to do with siblings as well. So if you are in a relationship, the lover's quarrel or the not seeing eye to eye can be around any of those third house topics where that full moon of Libra is emerging at the end of the month because Full moons, they bring illumination. So they light up that house, that area of your life. 
So when the lights are on, you can see everything and that brings up different discussions, right? But the other thing is um, sometimes full moons are culminations. So, you know, it can be a culmination of something that began a couple weeks ago. It can be a culmination of something that began six months ago during the new moon of Libra, or it could be a culmination of something that began, uh, you know, two and a half years ago. Um, so, um, yeah, that is, that's kind of the overview and I'm changing my format here. I wanted to say that it's kind of, um, you know, when, when Mars is in Gemini is when you have this 10 of pentacles as Mars moves into Gemini, it's moving into your 11th house of friends and business associates. Um, and, uh, and this meditation is, you need to strategize. And so meditation is going to be key. Time alone is going to be key in March, taking some time to yourself, particularly around the 7th through 9th. But any time that you can schedule it in or get it in, it's going to be very important for you. Um, I would recommend a daily meditation practice throughout the month of March. But if you don't do it daily. Make sure you're getting it in around that um, 7th through 9th period. It's going to be coming in really handy for you. And also, again, through that, you know, 16th through 18th period, um, you know, meditation, quiet reflection, time to yourself um, is going to be very important during this time. So that is the overview for Leo for the month of March. Um, if you liked it, please give me a like. If you didn't give it, like it, give me a don't like, but I hope you liked it. Please follow me on Instagram at astrology.tarot.elianicole. Please contact me to have your own personal birth chart reading or transit reading or tarot reading. I love doing it. I would love to do it for you. My contact information is in the um, YouTube profile. And um, yeah, have a great March. Thank you, Leo. Bye.